up until this point, all our layout tools have been content out and one-dimensional, meaning you apply a layout to an individual item, and then you have to relate that item to other things. What we need is a two-dimensional layout that works layout in. And that's what CSS Grid gives us. CSS Grid needs new terminology. So we have Grid Container, Grid Item, Grid Line, Grid Cell, Grid Track, Grid Area, Grid Gap. So Grid Container is any container in your document that you create a grid inside. You do that by simply declaring display grid. You can do this to as many elements as you want on the page. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it does not matter. A grid item is any direct descendant of a grid container. So if you create a grid, any direct descendant automatically becomes a grid item that's placed inside the grid, but only the first level descendants, just like it is with Flexbox. A grid line is any of the lines you draw inside the grid, horizontal or vertical. The grid lines are numbered by default, so the first edge of the grid, either vertical or horizontal, has the line number one, and then you just count them, two, three, four, five, six, and the last one has the last number. A grid cell is any cell inside the grid. A grid area is any defined rectangular area inside the grid that covers more than one cell. A grid track is either a horizontal track or a vertical track, so a row or a column. And a grid gap is the space between each of the cells if you choose to add, basically, gutters. CSS Grid in a nutshell. How does this actually work? How do we apply it today? Number one, define a grid on an element where you want a grid to appear. Number two, place items within that grid where you want them to appear. Number three, make world peace. That's all there is to it. What does it look like? Well, here's my example. This is the semantic markup with no CSS applied, except for color. Then we start by grabbing just the site container. That's the container that wraps everything. And we declare display grid. So now we have a grid. Then we decide how many columns and how many rows we want. And we do that using grid template columns and grid template rows. And here what we do is say the distance from the edge of the grid to the first line, that's the first value. Then the distance to the next one is the next value, and so on and so on. So you're declaring the width between each of the lines, and then another line is drawn. This comes with new features like the FR, or fraction uh, um, value, that allows you to say, take one fraction of the available space, and then put a line there. So you can make truly dynamic layouts. Do the same with rows. You just declare a list of where you want the rows to appear, and they will appear automatically. Once you've drawn uh, rows, you have cells, and your browser automatically places all the direct descendants of the grid element in those cells, from the top left to the bottom right. Then, for each individual element, you can, if you want to, declare a grid column and a grid row property and say, I want this element to appear from column line two to column line four and from row line two to row line three. That means you literally find column line two and column line four, and you put the content in between those two lines. Same with rows. What? And here you see what I'm talking about. We're doing layout in. So we create the layout first, and then we just dump content where we want them to appear. And when you look at this, you realize there are all these new things you can do, like, for instance, create actual white space on a layout. You can just choose not to populate cells. Then you have white space. No spacer GIFs or anything like that anymore. And once you know this, you can then place any of your elements anywhere you want in the grid. Looks promising, right? But uh, you have to do all this counting stuff and keep track of the line numbers. And then what if it's responsive and you keep changing the grid? It gets kind of nuts. In my layout, I move elements, particularly the header and the footer. Keeping track of that with numbers would be a pain. And to be fair, you can actually give each of the track lines a name and refer to them by name instead of by number, but that's still quite a lot of stuff to deal with. So we have this new property called grid template areas. And grid template areas is nuts. 
it's almost like ASCII. You declare grid template area, and then you write out each of the cells in your grid, and you say, what is the name of this cell? So for instance, here, I have the three cells at the top are title, title, title. And then we have main header header and main sidebar footer. Then you use the grid area property on individual child items, and you just declare the name of the area you want that element to appear. So if you say grid area header, well, that's wrong. I should, oh, no, it's right. <laughs> if you say grid area header, the element goes to the header area. If you say grid area title, it goes to the title area. And this allows us to do crazy responsive web design. <laughs> because that means instead of doing a bunch of crazy stuff, all you have to do is change the grid template areas. And then the items that you've already said, this is going in the title area, this is going in the header area, will just move around in the grid. So your responsive code and your media queries become very, very simple. And anyone who reads this code can see, OK, so we have a grid that has two columns, and then we put the title and title and main and header and main and sidebar. And then when the screen gets wider, we have three columns. And here we have title, 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 main, header, header. The CSS actually visibly declares what's going on. No more, no more, everything just works. This is that point where your brain will start going like, <laughs> what is happening? This, is, this, this, this doesn't actually compute yet. And trust me, I've been working with this for over a year. Every time I sit down and do a new grid layout, my brain keeps telling me to do things the old way, and I have to keep throwing my brain out and then replacing it with a new one, which means my kid is walking around in the background there and making noises. When he grows up, <laughs> He won't think the way I do, and he'll be like, this is super simple. And then I'll tell him about floats and clears, and he'll be like, why would you do it like that? That's so crazy. 